Today we'll talk about a prototype tank never before seen on the battlefield, a mysterious drone of unknown origin that could have done damage to all the wrong people, and we'll discuss a problem the USA needs to get a handle on right now regarding Russian weapons. Before we get into some highly controversial and possibly illegal stuff, let's have a look at something the US called an intelligence bonanza. Number 7. This was a short-range ballistic missile found near Kramatorsk, Ukraine early in 2022. When this unidentified missile was discovered, it did indeed stump the experts, which is why the Collective Awareness to Unexploded Ordnance or CAT UXO people got together. This organization is all about explosive ordnance disposal, and there's a large community, so when photographs like this one we just showed you appeared online, they put their heads together to try to explain what the object is. One of the most obvious things that could be clearly seen were the numbers and letters on the side of the missile, 9B899. Other than that, there were no markings. It was figured out soon enough, though. The 16-inch item was said to be a transponder, a device that picks up radio signals then automatically transmits a different signal. In other words, a decoy. It was said that they were released from the Russian Iskander M short-range ballistic missiles, which were located near the border. The New York Times soon picked up the story and explained, each is packed with electronics and produces radio signals to jam or spoof enemy radars attempting to locate the Iskander M, and contains a heat source to attract incoming missiles. The mobile launchers can fire two Iskanders at once, with each missile capable of hitting a target some 200 miles away. The decoys, which during the Cold War were called penetration aids, produced radio signals, and they also emit heat, which can make interceptions hard. The US called the discovery of these munitions an intelligence bonanza, since they explained some of Russia's ballistic countermeasures. According to one expert, the Russians were obviously being super cautious given that these counter missiles were already formidable weapons. It was a huge find since NATO air defenses could then be programmed to get past the Iskander's countermeasures. This next one is controversial and will likely be controversial for many years to come, so we did a lot of digging. Number 6. September 2022. A Ukrainian husband and wife in Izum heard a strange popping or booming noise in the sky above their house. They both waited indoors, feeling slightly on edge. The wife really needed to pee, though, and was unable to hold it in, so she went outside to the outdoor toilet. Little did she know she was surrounded by something innocent-looking but very, very dangerous. She later told human rights investigators, I didn't have a flashlight on because it was past curfew when I went to the toilet. Suddenly, there was an explosion and I was without a leg. She shouted to her husband, don't come outside, it's mine. Her leg was literally hanging off. Tough, tough woman. He went outside anyway to find his dear wife struggling on the ground and blood everywhere, her hands trying to keep bits of herself together. A Russian soldier gave him a tourniquet and they drove to the hospital, but the hospital told the husband there were no free beds. She had to be airlifted out of town. Thankfully, she's presently on the mend in Germany. Her husband went back home finding more of those horrible things scattered all around his house. This is a true story, but what are we talking about exactly? We're referencing one of the strangest and most controversial weapons in this war, one with the not-so-nice sounding name of Kid Killer. It's not the technical name, of course, they usually go by the PFM-1 mine. These tiny high-explosive anti-personnel landmines can be thrown from helicopters or launched into the sky, and they fall scattered around on the ground, sometimes called butterfly mines because of the wings on each side, which almost makes them look like children's toys. That's why kids in the past have seen them and then picked them up, which has ended in disaster. They certainly pack a punch for such a small explosive. It should be said, then, it's widely agreed they weren't designed with children in mind. They probably won't kill someone outright, but they might maim you and definitely make a mess of your body. They're also super sensitive, and since they're made out of plastic, can't be found with metal detectors. They hide under leaves, they look like bits of trash, you'll see one and you'll kick it and then you'll have no foot. Russia made them famous when the Soviet Union started dropping swarms of them after it invaded Afghanistan in the 1980s. The Soviet Union invented these things, although the US has had similar mines in the Vietnam War when it was dropping millions of mines on Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia that would be taking off limbs for decades to come. This led to laws being put in place around such mines. Countries that use such weapons are majorly frowned upon, so it's strange and disheartening to hear that we've seen them in Ukraine. They became a huge talking point and as usual, each side put the blame on the other. To some extent, the days of these mines are over, since 164 countries have signed and ratified the Ottawa Treaty, which is an agreement to outlaw the use of anti-personnel mines, such as the butterflies we're talking about today. Ukraine has signed it, Russia and the US have not. 
This is problematic. No one wants future generations of Ukrainian kids looking like the aforementioned victims in Afghanistan and Southeast Asia. Unfortunately, it's already happening and will likely keep happening, and in the future, there's going to be a hell of a lot of media space about this grim topic. But right now, things are quiet, especially where Ukrainian use of mines is concerned. The question everyone's been asking is, who is using them? In 2022, there were many reports about Russia using butterfly mines in Ukraine, which were then shared on Twitter, sometimes by Ukrainian officials. It was a bad look for Russia. We should explain that Ukraine, having signed the Ottawa Treaty, told the EU in 2012 it would destroy all its butterfly mines. It did destroy hundreds of thousands of them, but failed to meet the destruction quota after the EU handed over 3 million euros for the job. In 2020, Ukraine said it would not destroy any more and was keeping its stockpile of 3,363,828. This is where the story gets murky, because Russia has said Ukraine has been using them, and Ukraine has said Russia has been using them. What is certain is someone has been using them. One of the stories widely shared in the West by Ukrainian officials included the words, in the Kharkiv region, the Russian invaders are using internationally banned butterfly mines. In recent conflicts, children are known to pick them up. Many of these stories used the same photo, but none of the stories actually explained that the photo was six years old. Other stories said Russia had used these butterfly mines in Sumy and Mariupol, which was reported in some Western media. The Daily Mail reported, Putin's forces are laying indiscriminate butterfly landmines that children could confuse for toys in eastern Ukraine. Again, there was no actual evidence in the article, but talk about limbless children caused volcanic outrage. In a 19-page report written prior to these news stories, Human Rights Watch showed ample evidence that Russia had used seven types of anti-personnel mines, but didn't mention the butterfly mines nor did it talk about injuries. Russia was rightly condemned for the ones it did use. Human Rights Watch said Russia had used the POM-3 anti-personnel mine, aka the medallion, not a mine that looks like a toy, but an illegal, terrifying, destructive mine nonetheless. These mines were fired by the ISDM Zimladela-1 mine-laying rocket launcher, which can send mines up to 10 miles away. Again, we cannot stress enough how much of the world is really against such weapons, so their use by Russia in Ukraine was not always expected. The medallions have a sensitive seismic fuse, which means they can go off even when someone is approaching them. They also sometimes explode all by themselves. Human Rights Watch wrote, Russian forces have repeatedly used anti-personnel mines and committed atrocities across the country, but this doesn't justify Ukrainian use of these prohibited weapons. The story now was saying both countries had breached international humanitarian law. It should also be said that Russia used similar mines between 2014 and 2015 in the Donetsk and Luhansk regions, and there were no reports of Ukraine using them. But in 2022, video showed how Ukraine had used them in Donetsk. They were all over the place in some of these videos. HRW said in January 2023, Ukraine should investigate its military's apparent use of thousands of rocket-fired anti-personnel landmines in and around the eastern city of Izium when Russian forces occupied the area. It added that Ukrainian forces had been firing butterfly mines or pedal mines in large numbers over Russian military facilities. Pictures were taken this time stating each mine was filled with 37 grams of liquid explosive. NPR later wrote, Many mines reportedly ended up in private vegetable gardens near sidewalks and on residential roofs. The city's Ukrainian medical workers worked in reported they had to amputate limbs from almost as many as 50 people, including five children, as a result of mine injuries. A 77-year-old man was killed after stepping on one, and according to Human Rights Watch, four lost their foot or lower leg. It added that a healthcare worker at Izum Central Hospital reported medical staff had amputated 20 to 30 lower limbs as a result of injuries caused by these mines. The number rose to 50, with most cases resulting in traumatic amputation. In one case, a bunch of them were found near a kindergarten. In another case, they suddenly landed near a hospital. A worker there said, in the morning there were no petals, then we went out at midday and they were all over. They were dark green. One of the victims of these mines was the well-known promulgator of outright lies and half-truths named Semyon Pegov, a Russian propagandist that calls himself War Gonzo. Various news reports said in October 2022 he was seriously injured after stepping on a butterfly mine and lost a foot in the ordeal, exactly what happened to the Ukrainian woman in the intro. These mines do not discriminate. The next question is, how did Ukraine secretly scatter the earth with these things? This brings us to the next weapon. Number 5. There are many ways to launch butterfly mines, but according to Human Rights Watch, in the case of the Izum mines, what was used were 220mm 9M27K3 
Yurigan mine-laying rockets. Many can be fired at once in a matter of seconds and reach a target about 20 miles away. These were fired and then mid-flight something called the KPFM-1SSK cassettes were released with an explosive charge. 312 butterfly mines can be dropped from one rocket, which shows you that while efficient, they can hurt the wrong people since there are just so many of them. Witnesses in Izum said they heard a bang coming from the sky and then the sound of the mines hitting the ground or roofs. One of them said, I heard the sound of the rocket, then a pow. Not a big sound, then the butterfly mines fell. Others said they heard this a lot during the Russian occupation. The Russians tried to clear them and posted flyers around warning the residents of them, but that wasn't good enough. One Ukrainian man explained to the HRW investigator, I heard a slam in the sky. Previously, I knew that if a cluster munition explodes above our heads, the submunition would go over us because of inertia. Because of where they were, I understood they would fall on us, so I told my wife and we went to hide in the basement. His neighbor later came out and tried to remove one of the mines with a shovel, only for him to get injured. He ran back inside, his clothes all ripped. Other people also described hearing loud booms and then later, they went outside and saw little green butterflies lying around. A husband and wife said, then the neighbors were yelling that these mines appeared. The missile exploded over our house, but most fell over the north of here. They were informed by the Russians that they might explode 72 hours after they fell and to wait for someone to come and clear them. One man heard the bang and just decided to run. He later explained what happened next, saying, and then at that exact moment, I was on the ground on my back. I felt a pain in my back. I looked at my leg and it looked like an open rose. The mines were everywhere when the Ukrainians liberated the town in September and proceeded to help demine the areas that had been hit. One Ukrainian deminer said he'd stopped keeping count after finding about 3,000 of them. He told investigators it would take decades to clear the area of unexploded ordnance. While the investigators at Human Rights Watch didn't find the evidence of the Russians using butterfly mines, they did find repeated use of similar mines, such as OZM-72 bounding fragmentation mines. They also found booby traps with tripwires connected to F1, RGD-5, and RGN-type grenades. Now for a mystery we'd love for you to solve. Number 4. On March 10, 2022, something very strange happened not in Ukraine but in Croatia. Although the occurrence was no doubt related to the Ukraine war, we just can't figure out yet why it happened. Maybe you can help. What happened is a Tupolev Tu-141 reconnaissance unmanned aerial vehicle crashed into a park in the capital city of Zagreb. It was a good thing kids weren't playing. These drones weigh about six tons. People in the vicinity heard an unholy blast. This was a very built-up area. Some went out to see what had happened, and sure enough, what they saw was a crater. It was scary, to say the least, and the Croatian public was rightly concerned. This was obviously an act of war, but for what? Less than a month before it happened, the Croatian government had adopted a declaration which stated, Croatia sharply condemns unprovoked Russian aggression on sovereignty, territorial integrity, and independence of Ukraine. Still, opinions were mixed. Another politician said Russia and the US were involved in an imperialist war in Ukraine at the expense of poor Ukrainians. A poll revealed 58% of the public blamed Russia for the war, 26% blamed Russia and the US, and 8% just blamed the US. The war in Ukraine has been a divisive debate in Croatia, just as it has been everywhere. So some people weren't happy about the 16.5 million euros Croatia donated to Ukraine at the beginning of March. We also know now from photographs that some of the weapons that Ukraine has been using are of Croatian origin. Could this have merited a Russian attack? Highly unlikely. So what happened? How did a drone get past Hungary and Romania and land in Croatia? The preceding investigation revealed that the drone hit Romanian airspace at 2323. The Romanian Air Force could observe it for three minutes, and after the Hungarian Air Force observed it, it flew at an altitude of 3,300 feet for around 40 minutes, and when it reached Croatian airspace, it was flying at an altitude of 4,300 feet, traveling at approximately 430 miles per hour. Then it crashed into the Jarun neighborhood of Zagreb, not far from a student residence hall home to 4,500 students. The bang woke many of them up and damaged 96 cars. It hit with some serious force, leading to the Seismological Service of Croatia recording seismic waves. It could have caused some serious damage, even though both Russia and Ukraine have used these drones in the past, Russia said it hadn't flown one since 1991. The Ukrainian government also denied it had launched the drone, although reports said Ukraine does currently operate them. It used them in 2014 and it's used them in the current war. Still, there's no reason why Russia couldn't have pulled some out of storage. Reports said the aircraft had a red star on its tail, similar to one found in Crimea not long back, so that points to Russia. Still, opinions were mixed. 
neither Ukraine nor Russia could be discounted. That annoyed the living hell out of Croatians. They wanted answers. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg said, The indications we have so far on the drone that crashed in Croatia outside of Zagreb is that it was not an armed attack, not an armed drone. It's true that these drones were designed for reconnaissance, but Stoltenberg might have been wrong. These drones can usually travel about 620 miles. Since they're reusable, they complete their mission and then land with parachutes. Parachutes were found in some of the trees near the crash site, but so was something else. The drone was carrying a bomb. Croatian officials were not too pleased. Reports said the bomb might have weighed 120 kilos, and these things flew over two NATO countries without the slightest warning to Croatia. Had this drone landed 50 meters down the street and that bomb exploded, the next few days would have consisted of scooping body parts of political science majors. It was then said the bomb was an OFAB 100-120. Croatia's prime minister was fuming. He told the press, this is a real threat. NATO and the EU were supposed to react. We will not tolerate such a situation. We were very lucky. There were so many questions. Why weren't Ukraine or Russia admitting they'd done this? Why did some media play down the incident, saying it happened in a quiet suburb when it actually happened in a very densely populated area in the middle of the capital city? That one made the mayor pretty angry. But what made him angrier was the fact that NATO had not told them or scrambled aircraft. Croatia had the weapons to bring such a target down, but that was impossible since not Hungary, Romania, nor NATO had informed them. The rest of Europe was not too pleased either, with some people commenting that it looks as though Russia or Ukraine can now launch aircraft over other countries armed with powerful explosives without anyone saying anything. Surely it's not supposed to work like that? Isn't it NATO's job to be on top of that kind of thing? It also had to be said this big lump of aircraft is about as stealthy as an Airbus A380. The big question is, why Croatia? If Ukraine launched it, well, it should have been going in the opposite direction. If Russia launched it, then it was absolutely nowhere near its target. Some people speculated that the drone had been programmed to fly to the Yarun area of Ukraine, which sounds like Yarun, but that seems like grasping at straws. Still, someone joked on Twitter, people in Odessa, Texas, get ready. Now for something that apparently puzzled everyone. Number 3. This one was quite defined, what the media are calling a treasure trove of Russian intelligence. It was a ground-based electronic warfare system called the Krasuka 4. It was found in a forest near Kiev in March 2022, partly damaged but still intact. Such units are used to jam radar reconnaissance satellites and drones. They can track airborne targets and control aircraft, which reports say were very useful for Russia in its war against Syria when the units messed with the control signals to the TB2 Bayraktar drones and made them crash. A big deal, since those drones could destroy tanks and other armored vehicles. Seems Russia left this thing behind in a hurry, barely able to cover it up with branches. But what secrets did it contain, if any? That wasn't made public. But we do know that Western intelligence agencies were puzzled that Russia would leave something so pivotal to its war effort behind. This next one was even more unexpected. Number 2. This was called a one-of-a-kind find. It was a piece of machinery extolled as a super tank with outstanding power. It was a Russian ace in the hole, which nonetheless seemed to have experienced setbacks because of funding issues. It never got off the ground. We're talking about the Black Eagle T-80 UM-2. This was developed in the late 90s and was similar to the T-80, but importantly, one of the differences was where the ammunition was stored. This factor alone could have saved a lot of lives in Ukraine since reports from the battlefield explained that the design in Russian tanks had led to what was called a jack-in-the-box effect. This flaw has been known in the West for decades and it was taken advantage of in Ukraine. Basically, because the ammunition is kept at the base of the turret, even a minor hit on some other part of the tank can cause the shells to explode and off pops the turret. The three men inside the tank have the very worst day in their lives. Plenty of Russian tanks have been found in this state. At the end of April 2022, the British estimated something like 15,000 Russian tank crew had been killed, although it's not certain how many were the victims of the jack-in-the-box effect, but presumably it was a fair few. It's one reason such tanks have been called mobile coffins. Of course, there were advantages to this design, but Russia did develop the Black Eagle T-80 UM-2 as part to counteract this flaw. The program just never got going, and as far as analysts know, only one, the prototype, was made, and that one got blown up on March 17, 2022. This next one will surprise some of you, but we're sure it won't be news to a lot of people. Number 1. Such is the weird nature of global warfare that you can end up fighting against weapons made by the side that supports you. This has been happening, and in effect, the US, Ukraine's main ally, has in some way been helping Russia, as have other allies. 
Let's explain. After Ukraine started dismantling Russian weapons, American-made microchips were found all over the place, and we mean everywhere. One report said they were found in a radar-equipped Air Defense Command Post vehicle, as well as a KA-52 Alligator attack helicopter, a Pantsir Air Defense System, and to top it all off, a KH-101 AS-23A Kodiak cruise missile. But that was just the start. It's perhaps shocking, but highly understandable. The arms industry is not known for its ethics. Reuters said halfway through 2022 that it wasn't just made-in-America tools found in Russian weapons. The report explained that 450 foreign-made components were pulled out of Russian weapons in Ukraine. It said this provided evidence that Moscow acquired critical technology from companies in the United States, Europe, and Asia. In fact, reports stated that when Ukraine looked at cruise missiles and air defense systems and other battlefield items, they ran predominantly on Western components, two-thirds of which were American-made, with the other countries being the UK, Japan, South Korea, Germany, Switzerland, and the Netherlands. Another report said that RUSI, a UK defense and security think tank, discovered at least 450 different kinds of unique foreign-made components across these 27 systems the majority of which were manufactured by U.S. companies with a long-standing reputation for designing and building sophisticated microelectronics for the U.S. military. As we say, this won't come as a surprise to many people, but it might have bugged certain Ukrainians when they pulled apart those KH-101 cruise missiles, weapons that had already caused untold damage. The missiles were packed with 31 foreign components, 28 of which were fired in an attack on one day, March 9, 2023, but they've been used throughout the entire war. Some people later pointed out that the Russians had evidently been quite reliant on foreign powers' business. Others said the discoveries certainly do raise serious questions about Russia's ability to produce weapons by itself and how much it needs countries like the U.S. in this regard. One analyst said it showed a total dependence on Western technology for Russia and a total breakdown of controls that is supposed to stop this from happening. The sad fact is, weapons from this war and the components inside them will be traveling far and wide for years to come. Some reports say Javelin and Stinger missile systems have ended up on the black market. Some have gone to Africa, according to the Nigerian president. CNN reported that Russia had captured some US-made weapons and sent them to Iran. None of this is totally clear, and you have to be careful walking through the minefield of misinformation on both sides. But it's absolutely certain that some of these weapons will end up on the black market in the hands of nasty people. There are reports of Western weapons being sold on the dark web, although some people suggest this might be Russian propaganda. Nonetheless, Interpol's chief in Europe said it's inevitable criminals will get their hands on these Western weapons and flood the international market. He added, we should be alarmed, and we have to expect these weapons to be trafficked not only to neighboring countries, but to other continents. This is one of the consequences of war. In 5 or 10 or 20 years, you won't know whose weapons are being fired at you. For now, it seems Russian claims of Western weapons flooding the black market are exaggerated and a part of a disinformation campaign to worry the West. However, if the past is anything to go by, this is a story we'll be coming back to for years to come. Now you need to watch most insane weapons the US military is actually using today. Or have a look at the horrific life of a World War II prisoner day by day.